You have probably heard at lectures that in the course of every 24 hours, our organism produces a definite amount of energy for its existence. I repeat, a definite amount. Yet there is much more of this energy than should be needed for normal expenditure. But since our life is so wrong, we spend the greater part, and sometimes the whole of it, and we spend it unproductively. One of the chief factors consuming energy is our unnecessary movements in everyday life. Later you will see from certain experiments that the greater part of this energy is spent precisely when we make less active movements. For instance, how much energy will a man use up in a day wholly spent in physical labour? A great deal. Yet he will spend even more if he sits still doing nothing. Our large muscles consume less energy because they have become more adapted to momentum, whereas the small muscles consume more because they are less adapted to momentum. They can be set in motion only by force. For instance, as I sit here now, I appear to you not to move. But this does not mean I don't spend energy. Every moment, every movement, every tension, whether big or small, is possible for me only by spending this energy. Now my arm is tense, but I am not moving. Yet I am now spending more energy than if I moved it like this. He demonstrates. It is a very interesting thing, and you must try to understand what I am saying about momentum. When I make a sudden movement, energy flows in. But when I repeat the movement, the momentum no longer takes energy. At the moment when energy has given the initial push, the flow of energy stops and momentum takes over. Tension needs energy. If tension is absent, less energy is spent. If my arm is tense, as it is now, a continuous current is required, which means that it is connected with the accumulators. If I now move my arm thus, so long as I do it with pauses, I spend energy. If a man suffers from chronic tension, then even if he does nothing, even if he is lying down, he uses more energy than a man who spends a whole day in physical labour. But a man who does not have these small chronic tensions certainly wastes no energy when he does not work or move. Now we must ask ourselves, are there many among us who are free from this terrible disease? Almost all of us. We are not speaking of people in general, but of those present. The rest do not concern us. Almost all of us have this delightful habit. We must bear in mind that this energy, about which we now speak so simply and easily, which we waste so unnecessarily and involuntarily, this same energy is needed for the work we intend to do, and without which we can achieve nothing. We cannot get more energy. The inflow of energy will not increase. The machine will remain such as it is created. If the machine is made to produce 10 amps, it will go on producing 10 amps. The current can be increased only if all the wires and coils are changed. For instance, one coil represents the nose, another a leg, a third a man's complexion or the size of his stomach. So the machine cannot be changed. Its structure will remain as it is. The amount of energy produced is constant, even if the machine is put right. This amount will increase very little. What we intend to do requires a great deal of energy and much effort. An effort requires much energy. With the kind of efforts we make now, with such lavish expenditure of energy, it is impossible to do what we are now planning to do in our minds. As we have seen, on the one hand we require a great deal of energy, and on the other our machine is so constructed that it cannot produce more. Where is a way out of this situation? The only way out, and the only method and possibility, is to economise the energy we have. Therefore, if we wish to have a lot of energy when we need it, we must learn to practice economy wherever we can. One thing is definitely known. 
one of the chief leakages of energy is due to our involuntary tension. We have many other leakages, but they are all more difficult to repair than the first. So we shall begin with the easiest, to get rid of this leakage and to learn to be able to deal with the others.